In this video, we're going to talk about microbursts. Microbursts are localized columns of sinking air or downdrafts within thunderstorms that are usually less than or equal to two and a half nautical miles in diameter. Thunderstorm outflow can cause extreme changes in wind shear at altitude or near the surface during critical phases of flight. Microbursts are possible with many thunderstorms, as is heavy rain. Often virga and blowing dust on the surface are your only clues to the presence of a microburst. Microbursts can cause extensive damage to aircraft and eliminate the ability to climb or maintain altitude. Microbursts go through three stages of development. Stage one is formation. Microburst begins as a downdraft, which pulls in dry, cold air at upper atmospheres and begins to evaporate water droplets as it continues downwards. Stage two is impact. As water evaporates in the air, the air cools, gets more dense, and begins to sink even faster until it gets all the way to the ground where it begins to deflect into different directions and vortices. Downdraft speeds can reach over 6,000 feet per minute in this stage. Surface wind speeds can reach speeds over 80 knots. Stage three is dissipation. Once a microburst has reaches the ground, it rarely lasts longer than about 15 minutes. When it reaches the ground, it begins to dissipate. During dissipation, the downdrafts hit the ground and veer off in all directions. The strength of downdrafts and surface winds creates a dangerous situation for all aircraft, especially general aviation and smaller aircraft. The 6,000 feet per minute downdrafts will make it impossible to climb or even maintain altitude. There are two types of microbursts, wet and dry. Wet microbursts are easier to see because you can see the moisture reaching the ground like we see here on the screen. Dry microbursts are harder to see due to the lack of moisture and may be invisible to a pilot. Pilots should look out for moving trees and dust clouds near the surface for dry microbursts. But what should pilots do if they find themselves in the unfortunate situation of flying in a microburst? Since a microburst is most dangerous near the ground, let's consider an example of flying through a microburst near the ground. Because a microburst hits the ground and veers off in all directions, it means that initially, when flying into the microburst, it would have a very strong headwind. Then, as you enter the middle of the microburst, you would feel the brunt of the downdrafts. After pushing through the downdrafts in the middle of the microburst near the ground, you would then feel a large tailwind as you exited the microburst. You would experience this as initially an increase in indicated airspeed and climb above the glide slope, followed by being pushed back down to glide slope or below when you're in the downdrafts before finally seeing a decrease in indicated airspeed due to the tailwinds and a descent further below the glide slope as we see here in this animation. The FAA has a similar figure to the animation we are seeing here that they might ask you about on the IFR written exam. In this figure, which we now see on our screen, there is an aircraft in five different positions through a microburst and the FAA is going to ask you what each aircraft should expect. For example, they might ask, consider the aircraft in position number one, position number two, number three, number four, or number five, and so on. What will that aircraft experience? So let's go over what each of these aircraft would experience, starting with aircraft number one. Aircraft number one would experience strong and direct headwinds, an increase in indicated airspeed, and increase in performance without any change to pitch or power. Aircraft number two would experience headwind and downdraft. So headwind with downdrafts, it would experience an increase in indicated airspeed, but the downdrafts would remove any performance gains. Aircraft number three would experience strong and direct downdrafts, a decrease in indicated airspeed from aircraft number one and aircraft number two, and decrease in performance without any change to pitch or power. Aircraft number four, we start to get out of the direct downdrafts and we have downdrafts and a tailwind. This decreases the indicated airspeed and performance without any change to the pitch or power. And then finally, aircraft number five is straight, strong, and direct tailwinds. This decreases the indicated airspeed and decreases the performance without any change to pitch or power. 